Traveling was very limited to the lay Filipinos since it was expensive and also during that time there was no airships that would hastily bring people to a certain place as we have today. The major transportation means were streamers, horsepower, trains, and food. Jose Potasio Riolanda Alonso Rizal Mercado, also known as Dr. Jose Rizal, is the most traveled Filipino history. The travel and adventure of Jose Rizal are an important facet of his education and sophistication through which he learned the culture and politics of other countries. The early travels of Rizal, although not far, developed his traveling side which would be evident as he grows. So in this video, we will talk about the different travels of Rizal as he eventually ventures into greater horizons values and knowledge he acquired friends he met during his trip. May 3, 1882, he arrived in Barcelona, Spain where he met some Filipinos. He also made his first nationalistic essay, he wrote abroad, Amor Patriot, which was later published in Diarang Tagalog. To complete his studies and widen his political knowledge, through exposure to European government. He left Barcelona for Madrid to pursue his medical studies in the Universidad Central de Madrid. He also took courses in philosophy and letters and took French, German, Bibliothèque Nationale, working on his annotation of his successors. Rizal witnessed the universal explosion of Paris having as its greatest attraction, the Eiffel Tower. He formed the Kidlat Club, a temporary social club which brought together Filipinos witnessing the exposition. He also organized the Indios Bravos, an association which envisioned Filipinos being recognized for being admirable in many fields, and the mysterious redemption, the Los Mala Malayos, Redemption of the Malaya, which aimed to propagate useful knowledge. In London, Rizal manually copied and annotated Morgan's Successus de las Islas Filipinas, a rare book available in the British Museum. He also became the president of the Patriotic Society, Association La Solidaridad, and wrote articles for the La Solidaridad. In his 10 month stay in London, he had short visits to Paris, Madrid, and Barcelona. In Spain, he met Marcelo H. Del Pilar for the first time. In 1883, Rizal visited the French capital of France where he was fascinated by its architectural wonders. He also visited the Linac Hospital to observe and became the apprentice of Dr. Louis de Wicker, specialized in ophthalmology. He also joined Freemasonry and was impressed with the freedom they enjoyed in openly criticizing the government. Rizal saw Rhein Falls, the largest plain waterfall in Europe, and headed towards other Swiss cities like Basel, Bern, and Lausanne. Rizal was particularly fascinated with Geneva, where the people speak French, German, and Italian. Restoring his mother's eyesight, he began to dub as German doctor or Dr. Oleiman and made a lot of money because other people from different places flocked him for better vision. In December 1887, the Columba Fox asked Rizal's assistance in collecting information as regards Dominican Hacienda management. It was a compliance with the order of the government to investigate the way prior estates were run. So Rizal had reported among others that the Dominican order had arbitrarily increased and the land rent and the charge the tenants for the non-existence agricultural services. On February 3, 1888, Rizal sailed to Hong Kong on board Sefiro and stayed inside a ship during its short stop at Amoy. 
He stayed at Victoria Hotel in Hong Kong and not in Santa Mason, visited the nearby city Macau for two days along with a friend Jose Maria Basa. Among other things, Rizal experienced in Hong Kong the noisy firecracker, late on Chinese New Year, and the Marathon Laureate Party characterized by numerous dishes being served. From Hong Kong, he reached Yokohama, Japan on February 28 and proceeded to Tokyo the next day. He lived in the Spanish legation in Tokyo upon the invitation of its secretary, Juan Perez Caballero. In March 1888, he heard a Tokyo band nice playing European music and was astonished to find out after the gig that some of its members were Filipinos. We can surmise from this that even during the Rizal's time, some Filipinos were already entertainers in Japan, the Chapayuki or the Chapayuki. But if there were a person who truly entertained at the time, it was Rizal himself who was abused by the Japanese girl who used to pass the delegation every day, the 23-year-old Sieko O.C., whom he found he called O.C. On May 6, he went to Oakland. On board on a train, he took his evening meal at Sacramento and woke up at Reno, Nevada. He had also visited the states of Utah, Colorado, Nebraska, Illinois, and finally reached New York on May 13. On Bedlow Island, he had seen the Statue of Liberty symbolizing freedom and democracy. Inconsistently, Rizal has observed that there was racial inequality in the land and real freedom was only for the whites. But if Rizal were alive today, he would have been surprised that Americans have already allowed a black guy on their place. May 6th in Prague, he met Dr. Wilcom from the University of Prague who had toured him to the city's historic spots including the tomb of Copernicus and the National History Museum. In Heidelberg, Rizal was an apprentice of Dr. Otto Becker and was able to visit picturesque spots in the historical city including Heidelberg Castle and ancient churches. In Leipzig, he attended lectures in the University of Leipzig and worked on his mission of enlightening, enlightening his Filipino brethren with inspiring stories by translating the story of the Swiss independence and some of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tales to the Filipino. He wrote Tagalog metrical art and published Noli Mi Tangere. In Litmeritz, Bohemia, Rizal bounded with, with his close friend and professor Ferdinand Blumentritt on May 16, 1888, on a ship of city of Rome. Rizal sailed for, for Liverpool and arrived on May 24. Rizal toured Italy's famous cities, mainly Milan, Venice, and Florence, which is known for their arts and culture. He also visited the Vatican in Rome and was particularly overwhelmed by St. Peter's. In Vienna, Rizal was met by a European novelist, Norman Faust, who offered him in the churches, art galleries, and other tourist spots in the city, along with Danube Rivera. In Salzburg, Rizal enjoyed the Baroque architecture of the old town, the ship, and arrived in San Francisco on April 28. Rizal reached Naples, Italy, and was briefly astounded by the dynamic list of citizens and the picturesque wonders of municipality, particularly Mount Versailles and the castle of St. Elmo. Rizal traveled to Madrid in August 9, 1890 along with his lawyer, Marcelo H. Dovelar. He tried to seek justice for his family but could not find anyone who could help him, as if misfortunes were not enough. There, 
merge the Del Pilar Result Rivalry for Leadership in the Asociación Hispano Filipino. They supposedly had a healthy election for a leader to do a decisive and pleasant split among the Filipinos in the Madrid, which is Rizal Balista and Pilaristas. Rizal Dos decided to leave Madrid. So in October 1891, Rizal left Europe for Hong Kong on board the ship Melbourne in which he began writing his third novel but it was unfinished. He arrived in Hong Kong on November 20 and resided at number 5, the Aguilar Street, number 2, Gidnacela Theorist in Hong Kong, Jose opened a medical clinic. A Portuguese friend, Dr. Lorenzo P. Marquez, helped him to plentiful patrons of various nationalities. His successful operation and his mother's left eye allowed her to read again the first stopover of results on his way to Spain in Singapore, which he spent sightseeing the city including its famed botanical garden, Buddhist temples, and the monument of Sir Thomas Stanfield Raffles, the founder of Singapore. In Belgium, Rizal busied himself with writing the Il Pilibus Turismo and contributing for La Solidaridad using the pen names Dimas Alang and Laung Laan when he heard the news that the Kalamba Agarian troubled was getting worse, Rizal decided to go home, but Pashana told him through a letter that they lost the court case against the Dominican in the Philippines and they intended to bring the case to Madrid. This prompted Jose to go to Madrid instead to look for a lawyer and influential people who would arrive in Barcelona, Spain, where he met some Filipinos. They also merged his first nationalistic essay he wrote abroad, Amor Patrio, which was li later published in Jarong Tagalog. Rizal proceeded to take more than a month to Asian and Biarritz, a tourist town in southwestern France, noted for its mild climate and sandwiches. Arriving there in February 1891, Rizal was welcomed as a family guest in the house of Bostets. Usually, by Nelly Home, he had a serious romantic relationship with In Biarritz, he continued to work on his El Felibus, El Felibus Turismo novel and completed its, its manuscript on March 29, the eve of his departure for Paris. Valentine Ventura hosted in his short stay in Paris and the Jacobis especially fitted Suzanne cordially welcomed his arrival in the Brussels in 1891. In Brussels, Rizal revised and prepared for printing his second novel until the end when Rizal arrived in France for the first time at Marseille. In Marcellus, in road through the Swiss canals, Rizal got off at the Red Sea terminal and was amazed by the impressive moonlight scenery in Swiss and was engrossed with the multicultural people and language of the place and he visited the Italian city of Naples. In 1819, in 1891, Rizal went, went to gain because the cost of printing in the place was cheaper. He lived in a low cost boarding house where he had a roommate, Jose Alejandro, an engineering student in the University of Kent. Tightening their belts, they rented a room exclusive of breakfast. He bought a box of biscuits, counted the contents and completed their daily ration for months. In just 15 days, Alejandro had eaten up all his shares, whereas Rizal frugally limited himself to his daily allocation. 